All right, California's strict gun laws are about to get even stricter in the new year. Starting tomorrow, new legislation that allows authorities to seize someone's weapons without notice goes into effect. Officials can only take guns if they think there's potential for violence. But is that enough to strip one of their Second Amendment rights? Here to debate it, Edwin Walker, an attorney for U.S. Law Shield, a firm dedicated to protecting the Second Amendment rights, and Wendy Patrick, a prosecutor and president of the Association of Threat Assessment Professionals, San Diego Chapter. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Edwin, I'm going to start with you. Uh, they say that, that guns can be taken away from those, quote, thought to be a danger to themselves or others. What do you make of this law? Well, as you know, uh, California leads the nation in uh, gun laws, and of course every law they pass has the potential of stripping somebody of their Second Amendment rights. And this one, this law is extraordinary in that it allows uh, an individual's uh, Second Amendment rights to be taken away without any notice or opportunity to be heard. Uh, the law provides for an ex parte uh, restraining order, uh, which an ex parte order is an order that is obtained by one side uh, without even giving the opportunity, giving the other side an opportunity to respond to it. Uh, the ex parte order can go into effect for 21 days, at which time the judge, and apparently only the judge, has then the ability to have a hearing where he can thereby uh, continue the order for up to a year and then renew it for each year after that. And oh. so basically what it does is it leaves the Second Amendment rights of an individual uh, in the hands of a singular person uh, who may or may not have their own personal beliefs against firearms. Sure, so initially uh, it could be a initially it's a 21 day without, without prior knowledge a, a weapon can be seized, but it can go longer. Wendy, where is due process in this calculation for a person who's been called out by a family member or otherwise and now at the whims of a judge? That's right. Due process comes at the order where you actually have a hearing after 21 days. Think of this law not as a complete deprivation, but as a timeout. And remember, it can't just, you can't just ask that somebody's guns be taken away without facts to back it up. If somebody provides reason for the family members or law enforcement to believe they are an immediate threat to self or others. Now, why is that important? Remember, this law comes from the May 2014 rampage, the shooting by Elliot Roger in Isla Vista, California. At that time, and there was no mechanism available by which his weapons could have been taken away. Way. Think of this really as a, a, a way to have the people closest to the perpetrator, who are always the one who are in the best position to see red flags, to do something about it. Edwin. Now, at that 20, after the 21 day runs, the, the, you have a hearing, that's where you get due process, and both sites have an opportunity to be heard. Because remember, if Prevention, if prediction is prevention, then motive matters. So, and what are we always saying after one of these terrible tragedies has occurred? We're always finding out that it was the family members that often knew something, knew mental health history, sure. saw red flags, but they weren't in a position to have the person's guns taken so away. So Wendy, it's not Wendy, permanent, Wendy, it's simply a timeout, and it's much needed in our culture of gun violence. Wendy makes, it, makes an adamant argument about a timeout. We're seeing timeouts to the First Amendment on our campuses in safe spaces and free speech zones. Should we have a timeout for 21 days on the Second Amendment? What say you, uh, Edwin? Well, the thing about it is, is that I just think that in this, uh, with this particular law, the threshold is just simply too low. Uh, obviously, we have laws that do restrict firearms ownership for certain individuals, uh, but usually there's a lot more due process entailed. Uh, of course. Folks that we know uh, have never been able to possess weapons are felons. Well, felons have to go through the criminal justice system. Uh, they're convicted by evidence that is uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, and it's a fairly high standard. And now you're, you're lumping these folks in the same category as the, as, as the felons. Uh, based upon nothing more than the word of a family member who, you know, uh, we all have members of our family, they may go, you know, you never know what somebody may say. Sure. Uh, there, is one, there is one slight saving grace to this is that California does include in the law uh, an opportunity to have charges filed against somebody who filed a false affidavit or who is asking sure. for one of these restraining orders as a form of harassment. But, you know, we'll see how effective California is in enforcing that. But because still, there's I a lot of people. That just kind of looks like a window dressing. Still, at this a lot point. of people calling into question, you know, family members' ability to strip the rights of someone, even if only for 21 days. Uh, Wendy and Wendy Patrick, Edwin Walker, we're going to have to wrap it up right there. Appreciate your impassioned perspectives from both sides. Thank you. Happy New Year. You've got a Happy New Year to you both.